Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we are comparing the Ryzen 9 3950X and Core i9 9900KS in a boatload of games using one of G-Skill's most premium 16GB kits of DDR4 memory. It is their Trident Z Neo DDR4 3600CL14 stuff. Now, for those of you spending six to $750 on a CPU, purchasing premium DDR4 memory doesn't seem like too much of a stretch, but the main reason I went with this memory was so I could finally bring you guys that head-to-head -head comparison between AMD and Intel using manually tuned memory. Today's video is sponsored by Corsair in the new Hydro X series. If you're keen to get into custom liquid cooling but you don't know where to start, check out their custom cooling configurator. And this is a useful tool for even experienced builders. The interactive and intuitive configurator allows you to visualize how the end product will look, and most important of all, allow you to quickly and easily work out all the cooling bits you'll need to make your ultimate gaming PC. For more information, please check the link in the video description. It was discovered way back in the early days of AMD's new Zen architecture that memory bandwidth and latency were crucial for maximizing the performance of the Ryzen processors. Manually tuning up the secondary and tertiary timings can massively improve Ryzen's performance in games, and we most recently demonstrated this with the Ryzen 9 3900X. However, in that video, I did avoid comparing the tuned up 3900X to any Intel processors, as that wasn't really the point of that video. But after popular request, I did promise that I would eventually compare the 3900X to the 9900K, with both CPUs tweaked for maximum memory performance. And while I did have every intention of making that happen, I was stifled time and time again by product release after product release. And by the time I got around to making this video, the 3950X and 1900KS were on the scene. So naturally I've upgraded to the flagship mainstream parts and that means we now have the Ryzen 9 3950X and Core i9 1900KS to compare. In total, 18 games have been tested at 1080p using a GeForce RTX 2080 Ti graphics card and both CPUs have been tested in their stock out-of-the-box configuration with XMP for the Trident Z Neo DDR4-3600CL14 memory loaded. Then we have a second tuned memory configuration which sees the G-School memory timings manually tuned. Finally, for Intel I'm using the Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Ultra and for AMD the Gigabyte X570 Aorus Master. Okay, let's jump into the results. Actually, before we jump into the gaming benchmarks, here's a quick look at memory bandwidth. As you can see, tuning up the timings only boosts memory bandwidth by 4% for the 3950X and 3% for the 9900KS. Meanwhile, memory latency for the 3950X was only reduced by 5% and then 3% for the 9900KS. So based on those figures, you wouldn't really expect that much of a performance gain in games, but as you're about to see, that's not always the case. First up we have Hitman 2, and here the 9900KS is 21% faster than the 3950X out of the box, and that's quite a significant performance margin. However, the 3950X enjoyed a massive 24% performance boost with the tuned memory, and that saw it go from 117 FPS on average up to an impressive 145 FPS. That said, the 1900KS also benefits from tuned memory, and while not quite to the same degree as Ryzen, we still do see a 10% performance uplift in this title, which is enough to see Intel remain ahead, albeit now by just an 8% margin. Next up we have Resident Evil 2, and here the 3950X performs exceptionally well with the CL14 DDR4-3600 memory, slightly edging out the 1900KS both stock and tuned. For this title, the tuned memory had almost no impact on performance, at most, we see a 3% increase in 1% low frame rates. Moving on to Project Cars 2, and now we see another very mild 3% performance gain for the 9900KS. The 3950X, on the other hand, gained a more noteworthy 11 FPS for an 8% increase in frame rate. Not exactly mind blowing that, but it's enough to place AMD ahead of Intel in this title, particularly when looking at the 1% low performance. The performance gains seen in Rainbow Six Siege are very uneventful for both CPUs. Here we're looking at just a 3% increase, which means Intel still offered about a 4% performance improvement, though with tightly grouped 1% lows, the experience was identical using either processor. Testing with Battlefield 5 showed little improvement with the tuned memory. It appears as though the 1900KS was able to max out the RTX 2080 Ti with the stock Trident Z Neo configuration. Then we see that the Ryzen 9 3950X only saw a 6% increase to the average frame rate and a 9% for the 1% low, so nothing too exciting here. 
Moving on, we have the world of tanks results, and here we're looking at up to a 4% increase from the tuned memory. So pretty pointless in this title. Also, these numbers can't be compared to prior World of Tanks results as we're using an updated replay for testing. I've also updated where I test in Metro Exodus. We're now in a much later section of the game that's more demanding. Interestingly though, the 1% low performance is basically identical between the 3950X and 9900KS. The Intel CPU is quite a bit faster when comparing the average frame rate, 14% faster out of the box and 9% once both CPUs are tuned up with those tighter memory timings. Intel's Core i9 9900KS sees almost no performance improvements with the tuned up memory in Fortnite. We're talking about just a 2-3 FPS gain at well over 100 FPS, so nothing to get too excited about. The 3950X, that did enjoy a 5-10% to performance boost, but even so, once tuned up, the 9900KS was still 9% faster when comparing the 1% low data. That said, with both pushing well over 100 FPS at all times, it is hard to say just how much that difference matters. Here we see that out of the box, the 9900KS is just 5% faster than the 3950X when testing with Assassin's Creed Odyssey. So just an extra 3 FPS. Then with the tuned memory timings, that margin shrinks to 2.5%, and now we're looking at just a 1-2 to two FPS difference. So the same gaming experience will be had with either processor. This time it's the 9900KS that benefits the most from the tuned memory as the average frame rate increased by 5% and the 1% low result by 14%. Even so, this meant the 9900KS was just 2.5% faster than the 3950X, so yeah, pretty much the same gaming experience regardless of the CPU used. Performance in The Division 2 is a little unusual. Out of the box, both CPUs allowed for a 1% low result of 110 FPS, and yet despite that, the average frame rate of the 1900KS was still 15% higher. Once both CPUs were using the tune timings though, the 3950X produced a much better 1% low result, and now the 1900KS was just 6% faster when comparing the average frame rate. The Tune DDR4 memory configuration only provided a 2-4% performance uplift for the 1900KS when testing with World War Z. The 3950X wasn't much better though as it only saw a 5-7% performance boost, though that was enough to reduce the 1900KS's lead down to 4%. And on a final note, we once again see both CPUs enabling frame rates that are so high that the single digit percentage margins mean virtually nothing. This time when testing with F1 2019, we see very little difference in performance due to the tuned memory timings, though the 1900KS did see its winning margin reduced from 6% down to 3%. So yet another title where the gaming experience is identical, even at 1080p with an RTX 2080 Ti. Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint also isn't responsive to tuned memory timings. Here we see basically no improvement for either CPU, and this means the 1900KS was 6% faster. Pretty terrible optimization of this title though, I have to say. Less than 100 FPS for both CPUs with an RTX 2080 Ti at 1080p. That said, we'd see a very similar thing in Red Dead Redemption 2 if we didn't manually set everything to high. Here we're looking at up to a 5% performance improvement with the tuned memory, so not really worth talking about. Also, the performance margin between the 1900KS and 3950X is very minimal. Out of the box, the 3950X lags behind quite a bit in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Here the 1900KS was 18% faster when comparing 1% low performance and 12% faster for the average frame rate. The tuned memory doesn't improve performance for the 1900KS, but it does enable an 8-14% performance uplift for the Ryzen processor, and now both CPUs are delivering comparable performance. Very similar performance gains are seen in Call of Duty Modern Warfare when running the tuned memory, and both CPUs delivered virtually identical performance. The 3950X did provide slightly better 1% low performance, though the margins are so small there's simply no chance you'll notice the difference when gaming. And last up, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and here the 3950X saw a massive 21% increase in 1% low performance with the tuned memory, and a 17% increase in average frame rate. Meanwhile, Intel saw no improvement in 1% low performance, and just a 6% increase for the average frame rate. This means, while the 9900KS was 11% faster out of the box, with the tuned memory, the 3950X just managed to hit the lead. Okay, so the results seem to be a bit all over the place. Sometimes the tuned memory provided strong results, other times the gains were mild, 
and quite often we saw no gains at all. What did seem clear was the very minimal performance difference between the Ryzen 9 3950X and the Core i9 9900KS. For the most part, both did enable an identical gaming experience, and to get a better sense of that, let's check out the performance across all 18 games. Actually, before we do that, let's quickly look back at the previous 3900X and 9900K results. Right, so last time using CL14 DDR4 3200 memory, I found the 3900X to be 6% slower than the 1900K when using an RTX 2080 Ti at 1080p. Also, with both CPUs overclocked, that margin was actually reduced to just 5% in favor of the 5GHz 9900K, so overall a very similar gaming experience. This time out of the box, the 3950X was found to be 6% slower on average when compared to the 9900KS, so exactly the same margin seen between the 3900X and the 9900K when using slightly slower DDR4 3200 memory. Then with the tuned memory, the 3950X was just 4% slower on average, and at this point you're looking at virtually an identical gaming experience in all modern titles. Here's a closer look at the performance difference on a per game basis. Stock the 9900KS was 7% faster, which as we just saw, meant the 3950X was 6% slower. Out of the box, the bigger wins for the 9900KS were seen in Hitman 2, The Division 2, Metro Exodus, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Fortnite. Now, with both CPUs utilizing the tuned memory timings, the 1900KS was just 4% faster on average, and this time it's World of Tanks, Metro Exodus, and Hitman, where Intel sees its biggest wins. We see a big change for Shadow of the Tomb Raider, so let's take a closer look at the gains Ryzen received from the tuned memory. Okay, so across the 18 games tested, the 3950X saw just a 6% performance improvement on average from the tuned DDR4 memory. The only double digit gains were seen when testing with Hitman 2 and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and that's it. Moreover, just half of the games tested saw less than a 5% performance increase with the faster memory. Well there you have it, the Ryzen 9 3950X versus Intel's Core i9 1900KS in 18 games with stock and tuned memory performance. Though the stock results are pretty impressive on their own, as I did use G-Skill's incredible Triton Z Neo DDR4 3600CL14 memory. That being the case, if you're using memory with looser timings and more headroom for tuning, at least relative to the out of the box timings, then the gains would be more extreme. Still, as I said earlier in the video, if you're spending over $500 on your CPU and presumably over $1,000 on your graphics card, then springing for premium DDR4 memory probably isn't a stretch. Having said that, if you were to buy a more affordable CPU, such as the Ryzen 9 3900X or even a Ryzen 7 model, then what we found here is that you don't need to invest in premium DDR4 memory, though I had previously confirmed this in our third gen Ryzen DDR4 memory scaling benchmark. In that same video, I also found for realistic gaming conditions, so not 1080p with an RTX 2080 Ti, the improved memory performance had little impact on frame rates. Also, this testing further proves why we try not to gush over the 1900K as the ultimate gaming CPU, because while it is the fastest, it doesn't hold the performance crown by a significant margin. When compared to the 3900X, it's about 5% faster on average. They both cost about the same amount, though the Ryzen 9 processor comes with a cooler, and it's just miles faster in core heavy applications, anywhere from 20 to 60% faster. I also believe it will be the more capable product in the future, though that's probably less of a concern for those of you buying right now, as you'll likely upgrade in three to four years time. And that is gonna do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe, like, YouTube stuff, and if you'd like to join the Harbour Box community, then feel free to hit the Patreon link in the video description. I'll head you over there and you can look at the various tiers, but you get access to things like our monthly live streams, private Discord chat, and a few other cool things. Also, if you'd like to grab any Harbour Box merch, link is also in the video description. This is my new favorite hoodie. I love this thing. I'm not usually one for bright colors, but yeah, I really like this one. So if you like it as well, you can purchase it over in our merch store. And anyway, like I said, that's going to do it for this one. Hope you enjoyed the testing. As always, thank you for watching. I think I said all the YouTube stuff already. I'm just repeating myself at this point. So yeah, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.